everyone. So I'm sure you've seen splashed all over social media, the giant PR packages that CoverGirl sent recently about a month ago. Yeah, sometime in April, I got that huge box with lips, eyes, face products, all kinds of things. And that was incredibly overwhelming. And to be honest, I barely touched any of the products in there. And then last week, well, when you're seeing this, who knows when it will be, but they sent me a 19 pound box with 40 foundations in it. Yes, 40, all of them variations of the new CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation. And I thought, you know what? Let's play with some of this, not all of it, but many things. First and foremost, let's play with the foundation because last night I did a self tanner. Can't you tell? Oh my gosh. Um, but I am darker than I was. And so I'm not entirely sure what foundation shade to reach for. So I thought this would be fun to do it together. Just for reference, I did Saint Tropez um, Classic Bronzing Mousse on my face. And I think it's called Mind Tan. Um, I'll list in the description box below um, from like here down. And I have to say it was the first time I've ever used that self tanner and it was amazing, streak free, beautiful color for me. It did recommend applying it you know, two days in a row for a deeper color. So I may go ahead and do that, but definitely worked very nicely. They have, like I said, 40 shades and it's divided into light, medium, tan, and deep shades. That is easy to find because all the light shades start with an L, medium with an M and so forth. Um, they are supposed to have undertones of either yellow, neutral, no, cool, neutral, or warm. Unfortunately, they don't mark which ones are which. So I've done, I've looked on the website. I can't really find anything on that. So I thought we would just start playing and I'll show you how I do it when I'm at the drugstore uh, where you really aren't supposed to open the bottles and play. So starting with something like the lightest shade, L10. Um, and, I mean, you can first start by just holding up the clear part to your face and I can easily tell this is not gonna work. It would have worked last night. Another good place to, to hold a bottle up, usually the underside of your wrist is the lightest part of your body. Um, it's the closest in tone to your face because usually you're not walking around with your hand, with the underside of your arms exposed to the light. So this is a good place, again, to hold it up. Really hard to tell. One of them seems a little more cool and one of them seems a little more neutral. Um, I know a lot of you ask me all the time, how do you tell the difference? You just have to start learning and training your eye and eventually it does jump out at you. Um, it also, you just start to learn what works for you. Um, strangely, if I jump up to 50, this is a little more warm undertone and it seems to maybe match. And here's 60, this is a bit cooler or neutral. Let's start swatching. This is the part you're not supposed to do at the drugstore. It does have a pump, that's nice, and a little bit of a, oh, and the pump locks, very nice. This is billed as 12 hour wear, it's a comfort mat, put it on my finger, and then swatch it and rub it in on the back of my arm. And ideally, if it disappears into your skin, you really can't see where you put it, and that's the shade. And I put it right there. It's a little mm, ashy looking. So that was 50, 60. Let's try 50. I don't know if these are supposed to be shaken. I'm just doing it because it's habit. Okay, this is definitely much more yellow. I feel like Goldilocks. This one's too yellow. This one's too cool. Let's try 70. 70 might be it. So what I'm gonna do now is test it on my face. It's a little bit pink, and I'd say that's a little bit too light. All right, I'm putting 80 on right here, and it has completely disappeared into the skin. So I'm thinking that 80 is gonna be the one for me. So I like, in theory, that they've come out with all these different shades. It's great, but sometimes I feel like too many shades make it harder than it needs to be. Um, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but there's some foundations. I like that there's a shade range from light to dark, but it's almost easier. There's a lot of foundations that are almost chameleon-like. They can blend across a, a few different shades, tones. Um, with 40, you're in the drugstore, you can't sample these. I don't know how you would pick. Okay, I better work fast, this could dry. 
I don't know how you'd pick these. Um, this seems a little light, actually, now that I'm putting it on. I thought I had done a pretty good job, but we're gonna just stick with this because now it's all over my face. I can fix this by bronzing. So I don't know whether to be excited for the first time in my life. I am too dark for all the light shades and I'm a medium shade now, but <laughs> that was kind of a foundation finder fail. Oh well, we're just gonna keep it real here and blend and hope for the best. So it does dry down pretty quickly. It's actually blended in pretty nicely, so I think we can make this work. So let's talk about under eye concealer. I'm gonna just, you know, I'm gonna skip. I was gonna do my MAC Prep and Prime, but just to keep this test a little more controlled, I will not introduce that. Now they did send me um, six, I think, of these uh, concealers. The problem is, and I think this might be just the PR packaging, there is no label on these. Um, there are no labels, I should say. So I do not know which one is the lightest. It's honestly hard to tell. Well, there are the shades and your eyes are not deceiving you. There is barely a difference. Although I will say this one is the most yellow and brightest. And then this one has a lot more peach pink undertone. So that could brighten the under eye. I'm gonna go with my initial lightest one. Let's see how that goes. This is rather thick. This is the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Concealer. It feels a little thick and gloopy and I do not care for this applicator as compared to say the um, Clinique Airbrush Concealer, which has a similar sort of plastic brush to it. But uh, this, is, this feels really thick. Any brush hair fell off or this could be a foundation brush. I'm not sure. Doesn't look like the, okay. I did wanna keep a drugstore, so I brought my Flower Beauty Sponge, which I love very much for the face, but for the under the eye area, it's humongous. It's too big. So Flower Beauty, if you're watching, I doubt you are because this is a CoverGirl review. Um, make an eye version that's tiny, please. Oh my gosh, forget this. Let's just use a finger. I don't feel like it did anything. It certainly didn't brighten. Hmm. Let's try the last one. Let's just layer it up. Now, obviously I can't speak to how well it creases or doesn't crease because now I'm adding all kinds of goo. That's the technical term, goo. That actually looks a little bit brighter. Okay, that's working. The foundation itself, I should say, it's not the lightest foundation I've ever put on, but it doesn't feel heavy. Before I add powder, um, they sent a variety of glowy highlighter, primers, bases, bronzing bases, so forth. I did not want to mess with those. Again, too many variables with liquids and things, what's gonna react with what. So I did pick these. These are the Vitalist Healthy Glow Highlighter slash Illuminators. They have, I think, six shades. I picked up shade two and three. Two is a very, light, almost white, little bit of a golden undertone, I'd say, to it. It feels kind of moussey almost. It's a cream. And then number three caught my eye because it's, I know it looks very deep. It is. Um, but it had a pink undertone to it, but I think it's too deep for my skin tone. So I'm going to go with this two. There was a one, but the one was almost like a silver ice, and I just thought that's too much. So I'm taking something you haven't seen in a long time. This is a Real Techniques contour brush. I don't even know if they still make it. And I'm just going to dot it um, and blend it on my cheekbones. I don't see any high... Do y'all see a highlight? It's on this cheek. Do you see any highlight? No highlight. Since this is a little light, I'm, they did send also the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Powders. I'm gonna pick up the shade, this is Classic Ivory, and actually this is the lighter one. I'm gonna use this to set my under eye makeup. I'm just gonna use the mirror. Okay, this is the lightest powder. It's too dark for my everyday use, for me. Um, but I am gonna use the next one, the Buff Beige, just to get a little more warmth to my face. Let's see how horribly this goes. No, it's okay, okay. I thought this 
because the foundation was a little light. Oh, you know what? I should have backtracked. I didn't do my facial concealer, but honestly, this did a pretty good job of covering everything. There's just a couple spots. Let me get to, and I'm using the Derma Blend um, Smooth Liquid Camo Concealer. I tend to reach for this one in the summer. Okay, let's pet that in and then do the powder. All right, let me just add my um, bronzer and blush and then we'll get to the eyes. For the eyes, I have been using and really liking the CoverGirl Lid Lockup Eyeshadow Primer. It really makes your eyeshadow stick. Um, like really sticky. Unfortunately for me, I don't need, I don't use an eyeshadow primer to make my shadow stick. I really don't have an issue with shadow fading over time. For me, it's really just to make my lids more opaque. Um, so I find this to be so sticky that I cannot blend the eyeshadows. So when I do use this, which isn't that much lately, I just have been using concealer. I do go over it with a translucent powder just so that it's, I can actually put shadow on without it sticking. So I'm just gonna use the lightest shade and sweep that all over the lid. Everything else I'm showing you came from the original ginormous box they sent me. This is the CoverGirl, I guess, obviously that's redundant. Um, Ultra Fine Brow Pencil, I have it in the shade 720, Soft Blonde. What's nice is it does have a little spoolie. It's very tiny, it's easy to work with. There are a lot of options, shades. It also came with a pomade. If you prefer to work with pomades, I don't. So I'm not gonna use it here. This is a little waxier than some of the other products I've used, but it is a fine budget-friendly pencil. So there were two eyeshadow palettes, the Katie Cat palettes. One was, no, actually there were three. One was the True Naked Smoky, beautiful, but I'm not gonna touch that one. There was a, there are two Katie Cat palettes. The other one had much more fantastical colors like lavenders and greens and very pretty, but not wearable in my normal everyday life. So I went with the um, Hot Cat, Katie Cat palette, Hot Cat palette, and it has 10 shades here. Um, some mattes, mostly shimmers, so Again, no matte brow bone shade, which is one of my pet peeves. And then it comes with a sponge applicator. So I am going to not use the sponge applicator. I'm gonna do this coppery warm brown as my crease color, and then we'll see where we go from there. It seems like there's two distinct sort of, I wanna say quads, but quints. This one or this one. I guess I will go with this gold one in the middle, this big gold kitty. Let's do that all over the lid. Whoa, whoa. That is so pigmented and deeper than I expected. That is very gold. This is not on me, this is orange. It is not gold. Hmm, I am actually gonna take the little foam applicator and I'm gonna use it to run, whoops, the crease color under my eye. I feel like this is making me look a little orange. This is, this is not a good look for me. So I'm gonna take this shade, which is very light, and pat it over. Yeah, that's working. Pat it over the lid to tone down that brassy, coppery gold. Then with a smaller brush, I'm actually gonna take this deepest chocolatey brown. I'm gonna use that just to deepen up the crease a little bit. This is a pretty bold look for every day during the day. All right, the chocolate's not nearly as pigmented as the other shades. I'm gonna curl my lashes first, and then I'm gonna do liner. So they sent a variety of liquid liners, which if you are a longtime viewer, you know how much I love those. Um, this is the liquid liner. Okay, that, that's easy. CoverGirl liquid liner. It's in the shade 335. The cap has actually a little, the color of what's in it. So this is a deep brown. I'm not gonna do this on camera. I'm, I just, I can't. But basically, I'm just gonna do my best to just run a thin line 
across my lash line and then we can move on to mascara and lips. So I'm not a fan of liquid liner to begin with, but this one is just, if you can see, it's a very, very thin, it's almost like two strands of brush hair just pulled into a thin, flimsy, not a, a novice friendly uh, liner by any means. I'm waiting for that to dry down and then I will go over it with the um, dark brown shadow just to fix that a little bit because that was a nightmare. Now for the mascara, I have, they sent, um, I think three of them. This is the water perversion, waterproof, it sounded like I was saying water perversion, waterproof version of the Peacock Flare um, mascara. Let's see what this is about. Okay, it's a rubber, like plastic bristle, and it kind of undulates. Very, very, very short bristles. Okay, I'm gonna do the lower ones first. Ooh, they do grip the lashes quite nicely. All right, these bristles are so short that they really don't grip the longer lashes. I'm not loving this mascara. Cover girl, we are not getting along today. So far, I'm gonna be honest with you, I haven't used anything new that I would use again. They sent a bunch of lips products from their Queen collection, which my favorite drugstore eyeliner is their Queen collection. Best eyeliners I've ever, actually, maybe just my favorite eyeliner, period. Um, so I was excited to see some more stuff from their Queen line, CoverGirl Queen. This is called the CoverGirl Queen Collection Major Shade. I don't know what this is, if it's a lip gloss, a liquid lipstick, what have you. I picked the pink because I'm feeling pink today. I will say a lot of the shades are nudes for deeper skin tones, uh, even with the sunless tanner, it's, I don't think I qualify. I don't know what this is, let's see. That to me looks like this is liquid lipstick. No, it smells good though. It smells like frosting. It's going on a little patchy though. It's going on very patchy. Yeah, that was liquid lipstick. It's already dry. Okay, I am going to try this on top of it. This I'm excited to try. These are the Katie Cat glosses. First of all, look at the little kitty cat on the top. Very cute. Um, this is in the shade Kitty Karma. And it's this beautiful pink, very bright with, I can literally see the chunks of silver glitter in it, or maybe that's just the applicator. Nope, that's what's in here. We're gonna put that right on top. Ooh, this is a very almost dry. I gotta pump it a little bit. Oh, we're not having a good day. Yeah, this is very thick. Beautiful color though. Obviously not a color I would generally reach for. It's a little, it's like a sticky gloss. I, I have friends who only wear sticky gloss. I have friends that will only wear non-sticky gloss. So if you're a sticky gloss kind of fan and you like them opaque, whew. now there were some other ones that were more neutral, uh, nude, translucent, but I thought let's just go for the boldest. Actually, this isn't even the boldest. There's a turquoise one, cause everyone, that's a lipstick shade you need. In, Okay, um, and then I thought, let's just keep piling on the products. This is the Melting Pout Glitz Liquid Glitter Top Coat, in for a penny. Um, this is in the shade Double Platinum. I wish they had a gold version because I think that would just kind of work better with what's going on, but, and it's just a squeezy tube. Oh, whoa, I thought. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be like a translucent sort of shimmer. No, this is like, oh, did you wanna look like the Tin Man today? We can do that for you. Okay, okay, this is better. I did not mention that as I was filming, my skin has felt tighter and tighter and tighter. I feel like I wish it would tighten up this way, but in general, it just feels really dry. But it looks pretty. It might look really nice on camera. I'm looking in the monitor and I think it films really well. It's not a dead matte. So if you're looking for a budget-friendly drugstore matte foundation, I, you know, first impressions, I, can, I can't attest to wear time or how it's gonna settle in my lines and all that good stuff. But um, for a dry skin person, if you want a matte foundation, this is pretty good. If you're worried about this dry feeling, I would say add a couple drops of your moisturizer in with the foundation and you'll probably be okay. Everything else, I liked the um, eyebrow pencil. It, 
And while this is not a standalone palette by any means, I have to admit that these are very unusual shades for a drugstore eyeshadow palette. And if you have a little matte palette on the side where you wanna actually um, pair this with one of their true naked palettes, either the nudes or the roses for this, I think you would have between the two a really good selection of eyeshadows to work with and I think you'd be really happy. I don't think this is a standalone one. It's missing a couple key shades, but they're very pigmented, um, very soft, very creamy. There are quite a few CoverGirl products I do like. I mentioned the True Naked palettes, the Ready Set Gorgeous Foundation, the 3-in-1 Outblast Foundation. Um, my mind is blanking. Oh, you know what I forgot? I should set. I have been really liking this. The CoverGirl Look Lock Up All Day Setting Mist. I actually really like that as well, so I will do this. Very high in alcohol though, so if that's something that you want to avoid, then you definitely don't want to use that, but it hasn't bothered my skin at all. All right, on that note, I'm locked up the face. I'm gonna lock up this video. Didn't turn out exactly as I planned. The look is pretty enough, but I just, I would honestly say that if I had to go out and repurchase this stuff, I would not. So let me know your thoughts below. Thank you, CoverGirl, for sending me all of this stuff. Um, I will make sure all of this finds a really good home and, um, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.